let's let's talk game two. I want to start obviously from the Maverick side of things. What are some of the biggest adjustments um, that you feel like they need to do going into game two to try to get a split um, in Boston and go tied um, one one in the series heading into to Dallas for game three? I think realistically it comes down to, like I said, finding a way to play your style of basketball, um, particularly on the offensive end. Like I said before, I think it really comes down to Luke and Kyrie getting it going because if they're really going to cut off the lobs and not over help and leave them open threes, you got to find a way to kind of abuse that pick and roll if they're going to leave you that space with those floaters, putting the guys in jail, just getting your shot for yourself. Um, it could get to a point where they tell us, like, look, look, we're still going to live with that, even if you guys have it going because we think we can beat two people. Um, but you have to at least try to find a way for them to make some sort of adjustment. Um, and that's only going to come with Luka and Kyrie playing well off of that. Um, and then, like I said, really, it's the ball movement. Like, the, what is it? What was it? Had nine assists total? Yep. Nine assists are not going to cut it. You're not going to win any game doing nine assists. Luka is not – you're not going to win any game with Luka having one assist. So even with that, like I said, that's why I feel like if Luka and Kyrie get themselves going, it's going to open stuff up for the other players on the team to where now they're moving the ball. Um, they're getting some open looks. Maybe you get them to the point where they have to help at least a little bit. Maybe the lob is there. Um, but they have to get, <clears throat> excuse me, get back to at least playing their style of basketball um, because right now Boston, like I said, for game one they played – their brand of basketball and that really can't happen so you got to find a way to play your style of basketball and offend them in and again you got to get some stops you got to get some stops because when mm -hmm. boston has it rolling like that and then they're kind of getting whatever they want in the offensive end it's going to be tough to beat them again some of it really just is a personnel thing like boston just plays a certain type of way with the five out with everyone being able to shoot to where it's just sometimes it's just tough bro like they're really that good of a team but yep. you have to find a way to make them uncomfortable and not have them playing their style of basketball. I think one of the big things that's going to have to change and it's minor to an extent, but I think that Derek Lively is the best option on the court. Cause I like him a lot better in space, especially if he has to go up to the perimeter to guard because right. you're not guarding it's not like you're playing against Rudy Gobert screens now. It's, you know it's, it's a dive every time. Rudy Gobert is not popping. Right. Chris Stapps has that option, but obviously he's even more dangerous as a popper. And then even if, you know, anything all else fails, he still can be an effective player facing up or posting up. So I like Derek, or, or, yeah, Derek Lively being in that position, having to go up and cover more ground and play out on the perimeter more than I like Daniel Gafford. The issue here is that, Derek Lively picked up five fouls in 18 minutes of gameplay. And I said, I think three or four of those fouls were in like a four or five minute stretch where again, to his credit, Jalen Brown is getting downhill and just going up in his chest and continually getting Derek Lively to, to hit him on the arm. He's not going up vertically. So if I'm Jason kid, I would get in his ear immediately and be like, look, you're too valuable to pick up this many fouls. Like you gotta, I have him watching Roy Hibbert tape. We are hmm. going up vertically. They a score, tip your cap, but we need you on the court because I do not think they can sustain winning in this series if you're only able to get 18 minutes out of him. Because I don't I I don't know, especially with his shoulder, if Cleaver is the best option because he does not look comfortable shooting at all. So that becomes a no. huge detriment on the offensive side of the ball. And like I said, I just I like him in space a lot more than Gafford. Um, so I think that is one of the bigger things that Dallas has to address going into into game two, because he's I think he's he's going to be one of the more pivotal pieces um, for the Mavericks if they look to have any success in this series. Yeah, 100 percent. I agree. I definitely think he looks more comfortable when he's out there on the perimeter versus Gafford. Um but yeah, the biggest thing is really going to be foul trouble because he's still a young player at the end of the day. Right. Um, it's his first time in the finals. It's his first time in the NBA still, even though obviously we're still impressed by what he's doing as a rookie. Um, but guys obviously noticed that, like you said, with Jalen Brown attacking him and making him get pick up those quick fouls. Um, so that's going to be an adjustment. Is he able to stay on the court? But I do agree, though. I think as far as just adjustment like lineup wise, I think that's the best possible thing just because you're going to have to find a way to kind of neutralize what Persingis is doing, being able to pop out and shoot from damn near half court 
while still have the ability to roll. So, like I said, the biggest thing is can you stop Boston from playing the way they want to play? Um, and you need the personnel to do that. And then Lively is obviously the best option for them. Right. And I, I almost would even think for stints in the game, I would be interested to see more um, if they ran a lineup that was like Luca, Kyrie, it could be Josh Green or, you know, Jane Hardy or, uh, you know, Hardaway, Exum, whatever, you know, works like they can try different things or, you know, Jason Kidd sees whatever he likes in practice. But I'd like to see PJ at the five on Chris Stapps and see what that looks like, at least for a little bit. Um, because I think on the flip side, it puts them in a position where they could also five out to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you are bringing Porzingis up into that action with Luca, that's something that could potentially get exploitable more so than what they were able to do in this game, obviously, because a lot of the, the time was spent with, you know, Gafford or Lively or Kleba on the court. And at this point in time, I think it's fair to say Kleba is a non-shooter. So right. They just, three, there's no, there's no shooters from right. You got three home. different bigs um, who, you know, are, are going to dive to the rim and you're not right. able to get that, that full kind of open court spacing that you could. Um, so I, I think that's something worthwhile to, to look into um, and, and see how that plays out in game two, because if I'm Jason Kidd, that's something I would go to because, uh, j just the opportunity that that presents on the offensive side of the ball, even if it's not the most sound defensive lineup, if you're able to get offensive flow off of that, you may just net out more positives um, in the long run, even mm -hmm. if PJ is obviously giving up some size on the inside. And like I said, that Drew Holiday play really like, I was, wow, the <laughs> way you just let Drew Holiday back yeah. you down like that. No, um, it, it it would make sense. Especially in like spurts too, to at least try it out. Um, right. especially to see if that helps out open stuff up in the offensive end. Because in reality, I mean, if you're taking out Gafford and Lively, like you're really you're taking out rim protection. But the way that Boston plays with the five out, like you're not really getting much rim protection anyway. Right. So the biggest thing, like I said, would be Chris Swaps with that little mismatch down there. But it's if it opens stuff up on the offensive end, I think it's a good choice to at least try it in spurts um mm -hmm. especially if you just can't get anything going really um so yeah, it's interesting definitely interesting jason kidd is has hey, you got a tall task to really see what the proper adjustments are but i'm i'm definitely willing to see it at least in spurts and then maybe game two mm -hmm.